what's 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 2 plus 1 over 1 plus 2 plus 3, so on forever? This problem feels very reminiscent to the sum of the first n natural numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to n. We can solve this pretty quickly using induction, or more simply, write this sum as s backwards. Add it to itself so we get 2s, and the way things pair up is very nice since we get n plus 1 n times since there were n terms. So we can solve for this sum by dividing by 2, s is just n times n plus 1 over 2. Although sometimes it's more convenient to write it in summation notation. I would probably write this as the sum from k equals 1 to n of k. This means the same thing as 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to n. Now this wasn't the question I originally asked. I was interested in the reciprocal of this. Well, not exactly the reciprocal of this, but something pretty similar. What we can notice is that we can write our sum in question using this summation notation. We could write it as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to n, which is this summation we just found. So instead of using the summation notation twice, let's just replace it with this formula. So it's 1 over n times n plus 1 over 2, or more simply, we want to calculate the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 2 over n times n plus 1. If you've taken calculus, it wouldn't take you too long to figure out that this is indeed a convergent series. Say, compare it to a p-series with p equaling 2. But that doesn't exactly tell us how to find the sum. What we can do is the partial fraction decomposition. Let's factor the 2 out from the numerator, and let's figure out how to break up the fraction 1 over n times n plus 1. This should break up into two fractions as a over n plus some b over n plus 1. There's many ways you can go about doing this. I would probably multiply by the quantity n times n plus 1 to clear all the fractions. We can distribute and combine like terms. And here we do what's called matching coefficients. The coefficients on the left have to match the coefficients on the right. Doing that tells us that a has to be 1 and b has to be negative 1. Now we're interested in finding this sum, and this is what's known as a telescoping series. That's because if we write out the terms, things start to collapse like a collapsible telescope. Writing out the terms of the series, we would get 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2, then 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3, then 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4, and so on forever. But if we were to stop writing terms at some point, the pattern would look like this. The 1 over the 1 would never cancel out, but all of the middle terms would. We'd be left with just minus 1 over k plus 1, k being the number of terms in our series we wrote. This is what's called the partial sum, and it lets us find our infinite series by taking its limit. Fortunately, if we take the limit as k goes to infinity, that piece disappears. We just get 2 times 1, or 2.